as we are discussing convection in different situations, we are looking at uh, the effects of geometry and we talked about flat plate. The next one, another common uh, shape that many real objects can be approximated to is a cylinder. So next we are going to do cylinder uh, in forced convection and then natural convection. First forced convection. So here is the formula for forced convection. Now this formula of course to use it NUD is Nusselt number so it's H D is the diameter of the cylinder and K a fluid is the thermal conductivity of the fluid is equal to all of these. Now you notice that the constants they depend on what range of Reynolds number we are talking about. So basically people did experiments in different ranges of Reynolds number and then they fitted the data to find B and E, B and N. So they are not the same for different ranges of Reynolds number because the nature of the flow changes. Okay. The other point is how to use this information. So for a practical situation, you find the Reynolds number and you see where you are, which range, and you choose the corresponding uh, B and N. If you are in another range, then you would choose this B and this N. Okay, thank you. In the cylindrical geometry, a very common example is flow through a pipe, as you can see here. Um, here the equation is very simple. Equation is simply given by this, or H D over K fluid is equal to 3.66 as long as the Reynolds number is less than 2300. However, the application of this is a little complex. Uh, so let's say there is cold fluid. Let's say there is cold fluid flowing uh, through. And um, as the fluid goes through at different uh, sections, it's getting heated and our the surface temperature of the, uh, the of the cylinder is ts but inside the fluid is getting heated from this now let's consider that the flow is fully developed so the flow already has the parabolic profile developed as the fluid flows the temperature of the entire fluid is changing. So when we try to use this H for heat transfer calculation, as we normally do, we write H times Ts minus, what do we normally write? T infinity. So T infinity is the surrounding temperature. It's some faraway temperature that is not changing. But here, the heat exchange is between hot surface and the colder fluid, but the fluid everywhere is changing because it's being heated as it goes from one section to another section. So if everywhere it's changing, you cannot uh, have a, a some sort of a constant T infinity. So instead, the equation here is written in terms of a heat flux from the surface to the mean temperature. So at any section like this one, this section, there is a mean temperature over the entire cross section. So this is mean temperature over the cross section, over the cross section. And this H is in relation to this mean temperature. And notice there is no area because it just gives the flux 
at that location. And now, in order to know the entire uh, heat transfer over the entire length, you're going to add up or integrate, but that depends on how the Tm is changing. So all that discussion is more complex. We're not uh, doing that. Uh, we simply uh, make note that the H in this case would be given by an equation uh, like this. We saw forced convection over a cylindrical surface. So of course there can also be natural convection over such a surface. So let's look at a couple of those. First, we look at the case for the horizontal cylinder. And uh, for a horizontal cylinder, the case we're looking at is Ts. The surface temperature is different from T infinity. In this case, uh, Ts is higher than T infinity. So there would be heat transfer from the surface to the fluid and it will happen naturally because the fluid around uh, the surface is going to get heated and they will expand, they'll get lighter and so they will rise. So that's the natural convection. And here is the formula. So again, the NUD is H times D over K fluid. So we can easily calculate H. Um, again, Reynolds number is Grashof number times Prandtl number. And now notice that this equation is for a certain range. Basically, th these kinds of uh, experiments are done for a certain range of conditions, certain range of experimental conditions. And then they come up with a correlation of the data, you know, a fitting of the data that looks like this. So, of course, the results are restricted to the conditions for which the data was collected. And another situation for natural convection in a cylindrical geometry can be uh, over a vertical cylinder. So for example here the surface temperature is T in Ts let's say and surrounding is T infinity. So if Ts is greater than T infinity then fluid surrounding fluid will be heated and then they will rise setting up the natural convection. So we are not considering the ends. If we just consider surface like that, notice that if the sides are not too curved, that is if the diameter is large enough, then this surface is not that different from a plain vertical surface. And sure enough, we have a formula that kind of uh, follows that, that logic. So if D over L is greater than this quantity, meaning diameter is large enough given by this expression, then for this surface, we can use the same formula as for a plain vertical surface. Uh, that makes sense because the curvature effect can be small if the diameter is large enough. So we can use the or we can reuse the formula for plane vertical surface.